Hi, this is Dave Thomas with a short video tutorial showing how to use Stats Helper at race time. Stats Helper receives data from the EGS every time the judge pushes his button that indicates the heat has ended. That data includes team results like win, loss, tie, or didn't finish, and split times for each dog. Um, so we have two kinds of data, data sent by the EGS and the data it's added by the user using the SCUI. Also, sometimes the data sent by the EGS needs to be corrected. For example, we may have had a, a team that was faster but had a flag like a drop ball and chose not to rerun. In that case, you may have to change a win to a didn't finish. So let's go over how you use the GUI. It's split into three horizontal sections. The top section is where the user should, should really review before he saves each set of heat data. The middle section is where the data from the EGS comes in and the bottom section is a set of buttons that lets you decide what to do with the data after you get it, if anything. Uh, these sections can be resized to optimize your screen real estate. Also within a section you can resize them to, do, to be whatever you need them to be. That's pretty hard to do with a touch device with a tablet. But if you do it when you have a mouse attached to your device, uh, the application will remember that. So the next time you bring it up, uh, you'll get that, that layout. So hopefully you only have to do that once to optimize your, your screen size. User input's also needed for adding the active lineup, the run order, and indicating any flags that might have occurred. Also, even though the race and heat data is sent by the EGS, the people working the head table usually don't bother to keep that accurate. So the user needs to define the active race and the active heat as well. Before we go over each section in detail, let's look up let's look what happens when the stats helper is just sitting around and listening to the the EGS transmitters. Uh, I'm sending in some data with my EGS simulator and notice the GUI updates with their numbers in white every time a new heat is, is received. It really doesn't matter at this point what lineup you have selected. It, nothing get, I mean, the data gets saved, but it doesn't get associated with any particular lineup until you decide to push a button to save it. So what will happen, the, it'll always be listening to some transmitter, depending which transmitter it listens to, depends on what ring you have chosen. But uh, it really don't be concerned by the fact that new data is coming in all the time. When you're actually your your team is up and you're ready to start recording results, then you can start uh, doing something with that data by by hitting the save button. That can be a bit de be confusing because normally what will happen after much heat, you'll do save you'll save the data, and the splits will go away. Go, just to, to indicate that the data was saved and you're ready to receive a new heat worth. But at the first heat of a race, uh, the, the, the stats helper will have been sitting there listening to other heats going on and therefore it'll have some data up there, it won't be blank. Uh, but what will happen is after a period of time, the color of those numbers will change from that white color to a yellow color indicating that it's been there for a while. So if you see the numbers in yellow, uh, you can still save it. You can do anything you want just like normal. Just it makes you be aware that data has been there a while, over a minute. And so you think a little bit more before you actually hit the save button. So the user before each heat starts should go over this top section carefully and make sure that it's correct. You need to choose if it's a two ring uh, or more event, you need to pick which ring you're in. In the case of two rings, which is the most common case, left and right are defined as you are looking at the box, just like the lanes. Lanes are defined left and right lanes as you're looking at the box. The, uh, the current race and heat, notice these spin boxes. If you hold down on them a while, the numbers will accelerate. The longer you hold on, the faster they go. So. You don't need to tap your way one at a time like this. You can just hold, push and hold the button and they'll go quickly. The heat will go up to five and only five. When you change a, a race number, it'll automatically set the heat back to, to one. 
you pick your lineup we'll talk in another video about how you define these lineup but notice that as you select a lineup the dogs for those that lineup show up in the run order column and they also show up here along with their CRNs as the headers for the split time columns once you have the actual lineup you can define the order of that lineup or you can change the default order the order that you define the lineups with by selecting a dog and that moving that dog or up, in, uh, up or down so we can make Jenny the start dog in this case um, notice that the jump height is automatically determined by the lowest jump height dog that's in the top four dogs if we move scamp to not running in this case uh, well Phoebe's a little shorter so we get a nine inch jump height let's say we take Phoebe out all the way all together and we have these four dogs we don't have a height dog so the height dog went to 14 inches so as the heat is going on uh, nothing will happen even though you see the um, the split times come up on the EGS displays they won't show up in here until the end of the heat when the judge pushes his button but you can go ahead and enter flags by just clicking on this dog that had the flag so if we had a bad pass you could just indicate a bad pass we could have more than one I suppose we could have a bad pass and a drop uh, ball and when you do that it'll color code that dog to be red and it'll also set that dog up to be a rerun um, if if we later if he doesn't rerun at the time we can you know we can change that back to rerun and fix it that way um, so you can keep your head on the race uh, not have to worry about recording splits and they'll come on automatically and identify what happened at each dog and when the race ends or when the heat ends rather uh, new data will come in it will send some in with my simulator the numbers will turn white and after you review all this you should check the team time and make sure the team time matches what you expect maybe you messed up maybe you got the wrong lane so if you could you could go to the other lane and say right lane and you could go EGS resend and it'll, EG, that the, the transmitter will hear that and resend the same set of data before but this time stats health helper will pull out the data for the right lane and the left lane then you check that over and you can say save EGS results that will then associate the data you provided up here along with the split data create a record of the database and push it on up to the website note that the uh, the title points are calculated automatically um, so if the time was under 24 seconds you're going to get 25 uh, points however you got to make sure you look for DNFs it's biggest part of the stats takers job is to recognize when there's a DNF occurred and the EGS can't know about it so you need to change that to DNF and that'll get the title points right otherwise you'll have title points that you didn't really deserve when you uh, look at the summary just a few words about common mistakes and how to avoid them number one that first heat of the race be really sure you've got the correct ring and the correct lane you've got the lineup you've got the runner correct um, if you mess up on the lane, you can hit the EGS resend button and get the data sent again. If you mess up on the ring, you're just going to miss it. You've got to be listening to the right transmitter at the time the judge pushes his button. If you're, if you're not, you're going to miss the data for that heat. We can go back and get it out of the EGS transmitter sand disk card, but uh, it's better just to get it right to begin with. Uh, the other tip is don't be in a hurry to hit that save button. Uh, you have all that you don't you can you can still take flags away uh, you can you can enter more flags you can you can correct a DNF over here on a win you can do all that this data you have all the time until the next heat ends before you have to get it correct so don't be in a hurry to heat it to, to, to hit the button uh, take your time check that team time is the best thing if you see the team time up on the display and it matches what you have everything everything looks good if you got the wrong lane you can pick the other lane and say an EGS resend like we talked about um, if you didn't get the data if something went wrong I mean there still could be bugs we could have gotten interference and you did have flags and other data well you have a run order and you have flags go ahead and save it but just hit the save with no EGS results and that'll create a record in the database that has the run order and the flags and it can be made up later with the data in the EGS uh, transmitter to, to get the complete set um, in the next day in the next video we'll talk about 
what if you did hit the save button and, and then you later realize you made a mistake we can fix most anything here later and we'll go over how how we do that next thank you for listening to the video